Today we travel through a thousand years of meat. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. We're about to test our carnivorous knowledge and see if we can guess what century different types of meat were invented in. But first, today's episode is sponsored by Uber One, the membership that gives you access to benefits and savings across Uber and Uber Eats for rides and delivery together. You know, we're two savvy guys who like to save time and money here and there when we can. That's right, I mean, why do you think I've been wearing rollerblades lately instead of shoes? It's not because they make me look extra cool, which is a very nice side perk. It's because I save time by getting places quicker than people who choose to wear shoes, which are less cool, to be clear. Very clear. You like to save time, I like to save money. Yep. Did you know that I was brewing some deodorant of my own until Christy put the kibosh on it? Brewing. Brewing, yes. But now I realize that there is a better, less stinky way to save money and that's with an Uber One membership. An Uber One membership can be used across Uber and Uber Eats, so the opportunities to save time and money are just how we like them, ample. That's right, with an Uber One membership, you get a zero dollar delivery fee on food, groceries, and up to 10% off eligible orders, and 5% off rides. The zero dollar delivery fee means I can literally save money without leaving my house. Impulse ordering refried beans when I'm feeling too lazy to cook just became a financially responsible decision. In fact, Uber One already came in clutch for us today yeah. because we're gonna be trying a wide variety of meats and all we had to do was say, Deliver us the meats, please. Yes. Then zero delivery fee and zero use of our own personal time later, here they are. If you also like saving time and money but aren't cool enough for rollerblades and home brewed deodorant, <laughs> then you'll love the Uber One membership. So click the link in the description below, sign up today to become an Uber One member. Now, for the meat. Yes. It's a form of human sustenance since the dawn of humans, but which beefy boy has the greatest mastery of historical meat knowledge? It's time for the Shuffleboard Game Meat Edition. Welcome to the Shuffleboard Game Zone. All right, we're gonna be presented with an iconic style of meat, but instead of decades, this time we're guessing what century it was first created in. And it goes all the way back to 1500 BCE. And we realized that meat was created a, a long time ago, but we're talking about like when you, when people decided we can take this meat and eat it in this way, okay? And the beautiful thing about all of these meats is they all come from local restaurants, markets, and grocery stores, and have been delivered right to our door by, you guessed, at Uber Eats. Yeah, whoever shuffles their ham puck closest to the right answer wins the round. The loser is gonna have to eat a spoonful of head cheese Oy, okay. in Good Mythical More. Let's do it. Okay, here we have some sort of a I think I know what that special is. Special delivery of Is that Bologna? Bologna. Now, oh, it's hard to, it's hard to grab. Hit it, hit it. You know, I love bologna. I don't. Do I, I, don't I don't eat it anymore. Do I, ooh, that was a lot. Do I, I don't, do I have to eat it? Do take like a bite, man. What's wrong with it? Cause it's bologna, but I seem to remember that we added a rule where if it's here, we have to eat it. We do. It's not bad. You know what? It's not bad. Uh, who won, who won last time? Not great either though. Well, do you just want to rub it in? Oh, I did? <laughs> yeah, he wants to rub it in. That means I go first. Bologna. All right, you got all the way from 1500 BCE to 1900. I know that bologna was invented in Bologna, right? Which, is that Spain? I don't know, it's somewhere in Europe. It ain't America. This is after butchering was already a thing, like formal butchering. Formal butchering, like you're wearing a tux? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're wearing a tie. I think that 15, 16, or 1700 all feel like good guesses to me, so I'm gonna just push myself in between 15 and 1700 and then make you have to make a decision. Okay. Oh, that's a nice little- Oh, -oh! the placement is in full effect today. So, uh, huh. Okay. What Bump Fest do? is happening. Oh yeah, of course it is. I mean, I definitely think of all the choices, 
earlier makes more sense to me okay. than even your answer. Even my answer? How much earlier? Well, you're close to 1400, then there's a 1300, and there's, I mean, 500 BCE. I don't know, was that before formal butchering? <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. So I'd love to just kind of graze you a little bit. I wanna push you to 500 BCE while pushing myself to 1300 AD. Well, why push me at all? That's just, okay, no, try that. Because it moves you away from stuff. That's risky. And I like doing a little bit of a bump. Yeah, you it's like- It's just fun, bump fest rules. Okay, I like that, kinda. You feel good about that? I wish that I was closer to 1300. Today, we think of bologna as a meat that has a first name, perhaps a lunchbox staple of our own childhoods, but in its original home of Bologna, ah. Italy, Italy. Oh, it course. was a seasoned delicacy on par with fine prosciutto. This OG version of bologna dates back to the mid 1600s. Oh. I think I'm closer to 1600s. You are closer. But you're further than you would have been. That's true. If like, I didn't bump you. Hey, congratulations. So I get a moral victory. Moral victory. Have an extra piece of bologna. <laughs> Later. <laughs> What's in here? What's Ugh, in the bag? A lot of things. Uh, ooh, look ooh, at this. Some it, sort of a butcher thing oh, and it comes, a knife. It comes wrapped. Yeah, you just sit there and saw until I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, we don't need to cut this. Just take a bite out of it. It's pepperoni. I didn't, I didn't get it all the way. I love a pepperoni. Mmm. I've never eaten it in complete log form. Oh, that's the best way to do it. If you don't watch me, I'll be in the corner with a pepperoni. A pepperoni sausage. Mm. You gotta go first. Man, that's good. That's a high quality, locally sourced pepperoni noodle. Well, you would think that at the same time that they were experimenting and coming up with something like bologna, yeah. They're coming up with pepperoni. In Spain? Because they've got to find something to rhyme with it. So it feels like it comes after bologna. <laughs> Maybe it came earlier because they use the peppers and it's, it, like, it stays preserved even longer because it's a dry thing. So it might be the 1500s. Mm. You know what? I just talked myself into 1500, but uh, it could also be 1700 because it could be, you know what? It's either before or after. So I'm gonna do exactly what I did last time. And I'm gonna try to do a nice little placement in between 1500 and 1700. Okay. You just keep doing the same thing. I keep doing the same thing. Same but spot. I went a little bit too far. I was thinking along the same lines, triangulating to baloney, which I think is like, what are we gonna do with all this stuff that people don't want? The preservative part of pepperoni also makes me go earlier. Let's see, 15 and 1400 are both right there. Those are decent guesses. So I'm just gonna have to nestle in both of those right in front this of This is you. an official nestle? This is an official nestle, but I don't wanna send you to, well, there's no, if it's 1300, you're right. I gotta give you that one. My official answer is 1400. Okay. Stop, oh, 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 no! <laughs> Well, okay. that was a, what they call an over-nestle. Now, I could be right. 500 BCE could also be it. It could be, it probably isn't though. The first mention of pepperoni in recorded history can be found in print from a time when Italian butcheries began popping up in New York City. Oh. Not in Southern Italy, as many people believe. Lower Manhattan has had a pep in their step since the 1900s. What? So they came kind of late. Pep, good gracious, sorry. Pepperoni is such a recent invention. And it's an American invention. What? Well, you're closer. I get the point and I will take it. Oh, it's good. <gasps> I'm reaching in, it's a bag, Rhett. It's a bag of jerky? It seems to be a bag. Oh, is it moist jerky? Of moist jerky. Oh yeah, that's moist jerky. Mm, man. I think I should go first. We're tied. Oh, we're tied, you won last time, yeah. Yeah, step back, Jack. I'd love for you to go first. 
Of course, we know that beef jerky was popularized in the American West in the 1800s. Uh, but how did it get to the American West? Well, from the American East <laughs> in the 1700s. But how did it get to the American East in the 1700s? From Europe in the 1600s. You want to get to your day? Oh, I just want to see how far I could go. Uh, I'm just going out on a limb here. This is either really, really old or younger than you think it is. It could be easily 1500 BC. Yeah, it's just beef that you didn't slice and dry. Yeah. There's no other prep involved. It might be the first meat, is what I'm saying. It might be the first like prepared meat other than just taking meat and just cooking it over fire. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm going with 500 BC, not 1500 BC. You're gonna overshoot it. No, you're not. Oh, hey -oh. Just a little. Um, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I think, <laughs> I think this is the first meat. You think it's the first meat? I think beef jerky is the first prepared meat. It wasn't, it wasn't just good back then. Because you don't have to do anything to prepare it. You sit it out. It accidentally happens. 1500 BCE. So you bumping me or going around me? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go around you. There might be a little reverse bump nudge action happening. What, what? But it's not a clear out. I thought we said you can't reverse bumps are outlawed. You thought I said that. Refer to the scroll. Scroll O shuffle rules. And then if we go all the way down here, to the ones that are added. Should two foes be in the midst of a bump fest? That's yes, us. And enter the final round, nope. <laughs> if in the midst of a bump fest. That's us. Thou hasn't a chance of victory. Nope. nope that's not us. Is it down here? <laughs> Bumps of the reverse nature. That's this one. Are strictly forbidden. Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you. Up, up. Except of course, if Sir Link decides he desires a bump of reverse nature. How Which, did that get in there? Uh, in such a case, because I have said that. You could just say things and make rules? In that, no. You're not God. No, I, when it comes to reverse bumps, in such a case, reverse bumps are again legal, but Sir Link may not push his opponent outside of the boundaries of the sacred pyramid, meaning a reverse bump clear out. Each opponent must bite thine item. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been taking care of that in spades. Right. So. If I bump off the back and then I hit you towards me, that's, that's a reverse cool. Bump. As long as it doesn't go past the sacred pyramid, which is a and, clear out. And what happens if it goes past the sacred pyramid? Uh, we haven't determined that. Okay, you've locked into 1500. I mean, it's really just, is, is it 500 or 1500 or I something will, else? <laughs> Completely. I will point out, after all of that, I did not reverse bump <laughs> yeah, 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 we can. Sorry. We can cut out the whole rules part. No, don't cut it out. It was, that was, it was entertainment. We know. Jerky was first created by the Quechua people, a South American native tribe from the ancient Inca empire as a way of preserving meat. Their invention of jerky dates back to the 1550s. BCE? Nope. Oh, dang. <laughs> Woo! Man! You said ancient. What about non-BCE is ancient? I mean, I, it's just less ancient, but it's still pretty old. Doesn't it have to be BCE to be ancient? If I brought out a piece of jerky and I was like, this is from 1550, you'd be like, that's pretty ancient jerky. Not really. But I probably shouldn't eat it. Open up. Pull it out. Oh, well, interesting. Oh, there's a knife. Got a microwave safe container here with oh. just a nice, what is this, Salisbury, Salisbury steak? steak, man. I didn't even need to cut it, it's so, so tender. So like a TV dinner meat. Before TV. Oh. Is it before TV? Or I would think so. Did they invent it to eat in front of a TV? What came first, the TV or the Salisbury? Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe this is from the old, the old country and we've already done 1600s. I think the first restaurant 
was in the 1400s. Huh. Really? And it feels like this is like one of the first things that's on a menu in a restaurant. 1400s. Woohoo, it's hard to stop so early. Salisbury. You keep shuffling to the exact same spot. It's working. This is some good tender steak. I think this is later than 1400. I'm going for 1800. Oh, I hit you. What was that little, what was that about? I didn't even mean to do that. It seemed very unintentional. <laughs> but I'm okay with it. I'm still closer to 1800, which is my answer, and that's really what I'm standing by. Dr. James Henry Salisbury first used seasoned, broiled, and chopped beef patties to cure soldiers suffering from camp diarrhea. Oh, talk more about that, Stevie. <laughs> you don't want that camp diarrhea. Dr. Salisbury recommended eating the cooked beef three times a day for a healthy constitution. Considered to be a forerunner of the modern hamburger, Salisbury steak first showed up in the 1800s. Okay, so you, you were right on. I nailed one, and I satisfied to get that point. You don't want to spend any time at Camp Diarrhea. <laughs> oh. Oh, intriguing. What do we have here? Oh, <laughs> bacon. We have bacon, y'all. I mean, have you ever just ordered bacon delivered to your door? No, but I might now. That is high rolling. Oh, that's good. Oh! It's a little bit crispy. Why is that bacon so good? It's right. almost as good as a tie game going into the final round. So you now go first because you have the advantage of going first in the final round because you cannot bump in the final round. Right. Bacon, huh? Oh man, I, I shudder to think about a time when bacon didn't exist. Mm. Like pre-invention of bacon? What, what did people do? What, what do they eat besides their eggs? What do they it get picky about being crispy or, or floppy? Man, it all comes down to this. What are you thinking, Lincoln? I'm trying to think of the part where the bacon comes from and like, like the fatty belly part. There's so much fat in it. Does that mean that it's one of the first things you like shave off and eat or one of the last things you realize, oh my gosh, this is so obvious. It's 1900. We should have figured this out before now. Right along with pepperoni. I don't think we're in BCE territory, certainly, so I'm removing those. 15, 16, 18, and 19 are gone, so that leaves 13, 17, and 14. At least 1714 are grouped together. True. So I'm just kind of playing the board, and I want to be in the place where you normally are, between staking my claim on 17 and 1400. You really have the advantage here, Link. Leaving you only with 1300. It's only yours to screw up. Stop, 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 stop. I'm okay with that. Well. So as the rules state, your parameters are, you can't touch me. If I do touch you, intentional or not, and, and, and listen, I. I'm the one who says, even if I graze you, if I make any contact with you at all, yep, stay away. you put yours back where it is and you put mine. Anywhere I want it that's eligible. That's still eligible. I would have thought it was older, but this game is teaching me that things are more recent than I ever thought. So I yeah. would have, 1700 would have been my guess if I was going first. But now you I'm stuck try. with 13 or 14. You can try to get right in here without touching me. If it's 1300 and I'd go for 1400, I automatically, you're automatically winning. but. I'm not comfortable with making contact with you. It's been so long since I won. I'm trying not to get my hopes up. I'm gonna to try to nestle in 1400 without hitting you. I think you're gonna to touch me. Woo! Everybody got what they wanted, but who gets what they need, Stevie? Well, I'm scripted to ask you this question, but I already know the answer. Did you know that bacon is one of the oldest processed meats in history? Uh, which you both didn't know, apparently. Uh -uh. Although pigs were domesticated throughout China way back in 4900 BC, the Chinese began salting pork bellies to create the first ever form of bacon as early as 
1500 B.C. What? Holy moly. I have won by only fault of my own and more fault of yours. It's the oldest meat. Bacon is the oldest meat. Well, that makes me feel better about the world. Yes, bacon is the oldest meat. I'm not doing that. I just lost. And you're going to eat head cheese and good mythical more. I am. Now, thanks again to Uber One for helping us out with delivery of all of today's historical meats in zero dollar delivery fee style and for delivering some peace of mind because with Uber One Promise, members receive $5 in Uber cash if Uber's latest arrival estimate of a completed order is ever incorrect. Uber One suits whatever mood I'm in. If I'm feeling like a homebody and I want to order in, bam, Uber One's hooking me up with my favorite restaurant delivered to my house with a $0 delivery fee and up to 10% off my eligible order. But if I'm feeling super social and ready to go out, bam, Uber One's hooking me up with 5% off a ride to Rhett's house to pick him up for a night out on the town. Oh, where are we going? We'll decide in the moment, man. Okay. The world is our oyster with Uber One. With top rated drivers and priority customer service, we can afford to be spontaneous. Whoa, what's gonna happen next? But we should probably figure out a plan so I can tell Christy where we're going and when we're gonna be home because I'm still dealing with the aftermath of the deodorant brewing situation. Yeah, so when you're ready to join us in our super special little Uber One Club, click the link in the description below and sign up today to become an Uber One member. Thanks again to Uber Eats for sponsoring today's episode. Thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what time it is. I'm Cam. I'm Becky. And we just bought a house. It has shuffleboard in the basement. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. Congratulations, Did that's Did you find awesome. the rule scroll? Click the top link to watch us figure out how many rubber bands it takes to bust a hunk of meat in Good Mythical More. And to find out where the wheel of mythicality's gonna land. Need mythical merch in a hurry? Go to amazon.com slash mythical for grooming, logo wear, and reissued designs delivered with prime shipping.